So with that said, welcome back to Rhyme of the Frost Maiden number 36. And yes, we skipped one. I was not here for 35, so my fault. Yeah, yeah, no, what's, this, what's, this, what's this we? We skipped. <laughs> uh, the royal we, naturally. So, uh... Can't do that, Queen's dead, so is royalty. La last we had left our intrepid heroes. You guys had, um... Made your final preparations to assault the Ragged Glacier, where Yethrin is presumed to have been buried, according to uh, Ness Lantimere, the ghost who has been uh, possessing Lawrence. Uh, but you, um, upon receiving intel from uh, Myron, who was cleaning out the House of the Morning Lord, that um, you, you discovered that Barton, one of uh, Halden's old companions had uh, actually recently visited and had left a cryptic message for uh, any of the other agents to find, saying that he was building a weapon um, up in the Black Cabin. Uh, so you guys had decided to go there and investigate what was happening. Only when you arrived, that you had you had found that this um, uh, this old rotted cabin, which sort of sits above the snow on stilts. Um, had suffered some recent damages. Um, uh, looking around the inside, you actually found that much of the uh, inner chamber had been scorched away. Um, there was actually, you know, one halfling skeleton in the main room where uh, most of you find yourselves. Um, it was only in the uh, room directly north that you had found uh, what looked to be sort of like this um, uh, laboratory. And in the corner, a, uh, a, a sh item partially covered by snow that had fallen in through a, an open hole in the roof, um, which looked like this big lump of coal surrounded by two metal rings inscribed with runes. Um, but upon, I think it was at, I think upon Lawrence going to, actually no, it was, it was Halden. Halden went over and you, you basically picked it up. Um, and it started glowing with this radiant light. Um, a light that soon became so powerful it enveloped everyone and everything inside the Black Cabin. Um, and in that moment, your bodies were all disintegrated and transported to the border ethereal, where you actually found Martin, who had been trapped in this uh, not quite alive, not quite dead state. Um, fortunately, though, uh, Volk had been outside the cabin when that all went down. Uh, but essentially, you guys, quite literally, you know, were disintegrated and died. Oh. Okay. So you, you basically, um, while you were in the Black Cabin, you had to use your uh, powers as ghosts to sort of move objects around and communicate to Volg what had happened. Um, essentially, the Summer Star, which is the device that Martin had been working on, um, uh, was a, a an object of Netherese design. He had found a book um, while roving around the Icewind Dale containing these blueprints. Uh, for a device to potentially control the weather. Um, only the, de the design was imperfect, and as a result, it created this uh, arcane phenomena that transported him into basically you know, the realm of the dead. Uh, but he still had some measure of interaction, so while he was alive, he had tried to you know, keep the Summer Star from anyone who would come into the Black Cabin afterwards. <laughs> um... But fortunately, you managed to uh, communicate to Volk through either uh, writing with charcoal on the windows or uh, scribbling into the snow outside um, the directions for amending the design and adding essentially a third ring and inscribing the precise runes. Um, and it was only then that uh, you know, when Volk activated that the entire cabin was shrouded in a sky-piercing light, one that was 
strong enough to pierce through the snowy uh, overcast above and allow uh, a surprising visit from uh, the Morning Lord himself. So we, we chatted with Lathander? Yeah. Huh. Um, things. Hashtag. Yeah, he, he shared Shares some information it. that um the 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 over the overcast snows which had constantly been blowing through the Icewind Dale um had strengthened as a result of whatever happened on Solstice. Um meaning that you know whatever Father Limic did bolstered uh Oral's powers and now that the now now the snows of Icewind Dale are starting to spread to the rest of the Forgotten Realms. Um but so in in this moment with what little time he had, he was able to you know uh express his thanks and approval towards your quest. Um, as well as uh, revive all of you with his godly powers, uh, except for, of course, Martin and Nas Lantimere, who fortunately had been dead too long to uh, be given uh, such an exemption. So there was there was a, a moment of farewell as you uh, parted with your uh, two companions. Um, and then with what strength Lathander was able to summon before, you know, the magics infested with the blizzard sort of swallowed up the light, he granted you all a blessing. Um, and I think it's that every, every day you guys get 10 temporary hit points. Yes. Yeah. Basically that. Yeah. Oh, that's useful. Yes. Um. And so, where we had left it is you guys had all been revived. Um, Danica and Oyer Minotaur had also been eviscerated, by the way. They, they were resurrected. Um, but when you guys arrived, uh, you had heard this uh, familiar blaring scream and sound from uh, the, the east. Uh, and it was when Bolg and Yurik sort of exited that they saw the cold, chilling light of cold wa cold light walkers uh, making their way over uh, the eastward hill and towards the cabin. Um, only these these walkers resembled uh, familiar figures that you had encountered on your journey. Um, one of them was uh, Ravison, the, uh, one of the first frost druids you had encountered. Uh, another was Iselm Bloodfang, who betrayed you at Jarlmut. Um, another was the charred body of Nerth Maxildenar. Uh, another was, of course, the White Moose. And the last, unfortunately, was Temerity. As long as there isn't, like, a Ice Walker mechanical dragon somewhere. <laughs> no. Um, no, no, no cold light walker, Shardalon dragon, but, um, <laughs> uh, these, these figures have appeared from atop the eastward hill and they are making their way, uh, towards the black cabin with unnatural moans and sounds puppeted by the same cold magic that keeps the Icewind Dale in this frozen waste. Uh, and that's where we are <laughs> rolling initiative. Hey! <laughs> Going for this? Um, should I control Lawrence, or do you want to NPC him? Do you want to have Sam sit out? How do you want to do that? Um, yeah, you, you can control Lawrence. 
Um, yeah, I think you. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, I have all the access, so I just want to know how you want to do it. <laughs> I, I, I just have to. Uh... It's the other thing with this turn order. Um, I just have to erase the parts that. from another map. I presume that 12 was for Lawrence. Indeed. Okay. Uh, so we're just looking for Holden, yeah. and then I will roll for the old light walkers. But they'll all go on the which is four oh come on oh there we go all right so in descending order uh you have uh yurik Hell yeah. <clears throat> the, um, uh, the, the shield guardian, by the way, will go on Lawrence's turn. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, can I actually see them myself? I presume they're in this direction, right? Uh, they're 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 to the east, so they're over here. No. Uh... You might have to move closer. Yes. <laughs> For some reason I can't see in the house. There you go. Yeah. Keep keep in mind that you um. On on the walkway out here, you are twenty feet above the ground. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware. I don't, I don't really want to be. Yeah, I'm just thinking about running inside and getting to the other side. It's five feet. Twenty-five. I guess I might have to use my dash for this. Yeah, let's just jump on top of that, and then again, and I'll use my dash to get to the other... Oh, God, there's a person there. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, there's, uh... There's Danica. 20. I'm assuming this door opens. It does. Yeah, n n none of the doors that you have discovered are locked. I think that's just 30 feet. It's, okay. it's hard to see everyone. <laughs> Oh, there's a door. That's where I was looking at. Oh, I could have done that instead. <laughs> yeah, I can go ahead and remove some of these doors for you. Yeah, well, I, I wanted to basically be in here so I could actually see them out there. Gotcha. But I, I, I didn't know that room was a door because <laughs> obviously I've got no light to it. It makes sense. Yeah, so if I could I just revert my action to move into that room instead, basically. Sure. Yeah, so... Get in there so I can actually see through there. Uh, and I presume I can take cover, basically. Yeah, uh, the the window there would act as cover. Yeah, yeah, so. Uh, but I still think I had to dash to get there, so obviously I've got no other actions. Okay. Dash counts as a full action, doesn't it? Move yeah, in it's, standard. It's, yeah, yeah, using yeah, your yeah. action to move the rest. Yeah, so that's at the, the end of my turn. Alright. Zunas, you hear, you, you, you do not see the threat, but you can hear them coming over the hill outside. Okie dokie. Um, what do, what does Zunas recall about these creatures' capabilities? Um, they are immune to cold, of course. Um, the, the frightening abilities they possess are, they can, um, use their projected light to blind you. Um, they are also, they have some particularly nasty uh, melee attacks, and then they have one ranged attack that they can fire from like 60. Okay, so they're not casters or anything like that. No. Um, <laughs> they're, they're just formidable creatures. 
Gotcha. All right. And uh, from his perspective, Volg is down here somewhere. Yurik just ran past the two windows down here. Yeah, Yurik went out and about. Okay. And and Volg is outside. He started there. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, this is not good. This is not good at all. And he will run towards the door so you can see what's going on. And is there line of sight here? Yeah, so you, you can probably see the um, the half remains of the undead moose. Okay. From its um, eyes, ah, the chilling light emerges. Gotcha. So, yeah, he's gonna spots that and takes it. Whoa, I don't want to go out there yet. And uh, he'll just just dodge for now. So things get a little right. more organized. Sounds good. Volga. <clears throat> Uh, are they actually within ten feet of me, or are they still coming over the mountains? Yeah, we can we can say that they're basically as close as they are to. You. Uh, formidable, formidable, going here, and then getting big. All right, he get big. Uh, room thing. Enlarge. Minus one on that. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, the who's who of faceless goons, uh, which one's which? Uh, from the top, um, it would be uh, Ravson, Iselm, Nerf, and. Meredy would be the one uh, north of north of the moose. Uh, I'm gonna hit the the druid, Rabison. Yep, that's at the top. Okay, so bonus action, A sword time for Rabison. That hits. Uh, two attacks. Yeah, also hits. Uh, so how does she look after 26? Uh, still going strong. Propelled by cold hatred. Kind of tough. I'm going to action search. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> uh, both of those hit. Uh, another 12 and then 14 so another 26 um, it is at that point that uh, her body begins to crumble a bit okay just shout back to the others uh, I don't remember these guys being so, sh so tough that's it all right uh, following that, we have Lawrence. Uh, Lawrence is going to grasp the shield, uh, shield guardian, I think. Yep. Shield guardian amulet. And commanded to cast a... That's a whole lot of giant strength. Um, uh, re retroactively, that damage that is on top of them. <laughs> <laughs> Can I? I think I can share this. Uh... If you share control of the token, I should be able to do what I need to do from there. Yeah. Well, there's there's a there's a creature token in the journal. Um... Yeah. So you need to change the token as well as the. Beat so you should, all you players. Be able to, um... Do you see that in the journal? Yeah. So I have the journal, but not the token. So you, you do need to change both. Okay. 
Uh, no, it's... it's it... Oh, I, I see. So we'll do it like this. Okay, there we go. All right, cool. Two of them. Oh. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> um, so, does anyone know for a fact if Lawrence had, had the Shield Guardian prepare a particular spell? Probably not. Okay. Probably not. Would it be reasonable to say that it prepared a greater invisibility within its capabilities? Um... It can store sure. up to a level four. I'll allow it. Okay. Oh. So he commands the shield guardian to release the magic that it has stored, and the shield guardian disappears from sight. As affected by <laughs> greater invisibility. All right. Well, we'll just. Uh... Yep. There you go. Let's see. That is. Just seeing what the actions are for that. Uh, it doesn't say what the action economy is. I'm going to assume that's its standard. That just Do makes so sense. Wearer must cast the spell on the Guardian. Um... When commanded to do so by the Wearer. So I'm assuming it takes some kind of interaction to do that. So let's, let's just say that was an action for the Shield Guardian. Well, it would have been pre-stored, so it would have, it would have been the commands that Lawrence gives. So, um, so action on Lawrence's side? Yeah, I would, I would say that. Okay. So with that, the shield guard, guardian will lumber on and take a smack. He's he's just basically gonna lock into a like a, an arm rest uh, a wrestler move with the horns of the. Uh, Giant elk. Gotcha. So I will have advantage. Heck! Locked at the GM roll. Uh, first one was a 15. The second one was a 22, which both hit. Um, I'll just go ahead and roll the attack. Both do... Yeah, both did 15 bludgeoning. So it takes a solid 30. Nice. Let me take half a second to find where the GM rolls setting is. Auto roll damage, yes. Oh, never whisper. Always roll. Okay, cool. So let me test that. Yep, there we go. Cool. Nice and easy. All right. Uh, Lawrence will then... Uh, he would have seen Uruk run by. He'll move far in this direction as he can. Can he see Uruk from here? Uh, I'd say he would with the door being open. Yeah. Alright, so inspiration. Bardic yeah, inspiration. Yeah. As a bonus action. Oh. I think that was a bonus action, right? Yep. We can see someone play a bard properly. It's amazing. And and that will be his turn. <laughs> hey, what can I tell you guys? I'm a caster. I know how casters work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I was just taking a jam by us. So nothing anything. Yeah. So, um, oh, I, I forgot to mention. Um, last time I had started experimenting with just like a homebrew system for the NPCs. Um, so you should see in the journals uh, access to Oyar Minotaur and Danica. I can see the NPC sheets, yeah. Yeah. Um, ba basically, j just to explain it, Mark, and I guess to whoever's watching the stream, is that um, for the NPCs, uh, the hit points on each NBC represent the amount of attacks that they can take. Uh, so if a character receives an attack that's above their AC, then their hit points are reduced by one. If it's a critical, then it's reduced by two. Um, of course, when they reach zero hit points, they fall unconscious, just like any other creature. Um, and then they have 
specific standard actions that you can sort of play like items or spells that will add support to actions that you do. Sounds reasonable. Just just like a like a simple system, and of course you have all the saves there. Um, so you you can feel free to move them how you would see fit. Um, mechanically, if you could, uh, Zunus's vision does not seem to be applying. The room is black to Zunus. Um, okay, okay. Just assume a forty by twenty. Thought, oh, thought I had given you, but maybe it's on a. So. Uh, so it was a uh, succeed. Yeah, that's fine. At least okay, for this, yeah. this for this environment, it's not going to make a difference. Just being able to see it all is fine. Um. So how do we uh, operate the control of those NPCs in terms of turn order and who can command them to do what? Um, I'll I'll just add a. Uh... Or you to the turn order, um, but ba basically it's like it, it would be as though if you had summoned them, like like the shield guardian, whoever wants to take control. Um, for you guys, I'm gonna say go nuts with that. I've got my hands full with the two characters as it is. I mean, so so me. Lawrence will Lawrence will have finished his turn at this point. Who, who who wants to take or your men talk? Well, I was gonna say I can't even see them on the map right now. Uh, she's, uh, just a, she's just to get in there and more stuff fighter, right? <clears throat> yes. I, I'll take that then. Um, you should have. You know what? I'll I'll do this. Go. And then uh. I've, I've long since found it's just easier to give everyone control. Yeah, oh. that, that, that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, just send everything to all players and just trust the players. So you, you guys should all be able to see their tokens on the map, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, don't no. think they're, they're not generating any vision, but I can see and control them. All right, I'll just uh, set vision quick. Isn't digital GMing fun? <laughs> uh, if if and when we do try to, we might try it on Foundry. Foundry is very well built for two E. Yes, so very I'm much so. I'm playing it on. I, I do own my own server. If you need one to be uh, volunteered. So you, you should be able to see now their vision as well. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, so Volg, you're taking Oya, and then... Yeah, I guess uh, I'll take uh, Danica. All right. Sounds good. So Lawrence would have gone, so it's you, Halton. All right. Here. Uh, I'll jump down there to find. Just gonna drop the twenty feet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you just wanna make an acrobatics for me? I have slow fall. Oh, there you go then. Okay, I assume the enemies are somewhere over here, and I'll dash over here, um, and that's my turn. Here, I'll just, just do this. Um, there you go. Uh, yeah, so as you, as you come running through the snow, you can see 
<laughs> the the giant zombie moose engaged with some invisible force while Volg, giant and hulking, is dealing with the squadron of uh, cold light walkers in front of him. Uh, speaking of, it's now their turn. The, the one representing Ravison is certainly the most damaged. Um, but, uh... They're going to... Check... Okay, they, they have not yet noticed Yurik, so they're going to focus on Volk. Volk, you are going to get two slam attacks from Ravison. Uh-huh. Seven and ten. Nope. Uh... The one below, which I believe is Iselm. Yep. Uh, is going to do another couple of slams. All right. Uh, 20 and 20. They both hit. All right. Uh, first attack is going to deal 14 bludgeoning damage mm, and nice. 15 cold damage. Halved. And then the second attack is going to deal 14 bludgeoning damage and 12 cold damage. Um, the cold light walker representing the charred body of Nerf is going to look over as Halden approaches and fire a cold ray from its uh, blinding face. Uh, and that's going to be a 19 to hit you, Halden. Mate, you there? Yep. Uh, it does a 19 hit Halden. Oh, it can attack. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, it's got a, it's got a ranged attack. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, you will take then uh, 25 cold damage. And then the last walker. Uh, representing Merity, uh, is going to walk forwards, gauge you directly, Halden. Uh, I thought it was. It, I thought it was a disadvantage if you are using it against someone in melee with you, not if someone else is a distance away. I believe it if you're engaged with anyone, but I could be wrong. However you want to call it, doesn't make a difference. Um, we'll, we'll just go with it for now. Cool, cool. But yeah, the, the um, the Cold Light Walker representing Temerity just sort of lurches across the snow until it's face to face with you, Halden. Um, cold light blaring from the Tiefling's eyes and maw. And uh, just in like a, a raspy voice, like, Where were you? I needed you. It's just gonna try and rend you with a couple of slam attacks. Uh, first one is a 14. Miss. The second one is a natural 20. Yeah, that is. Uh, shh, Sentinel was popping off because of... He's attacking someone while he's next to me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plus that. So that will hit. Um, so you will take, as a result of that... Critical hit, Hall then. Uh, 22 bludgeoning damage. Okay. And 15 cold damage. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, and then Temerity Walker will take seven. All right, starting from the top, Yurik. Potentially muted, Yurik? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was. I was just saying, what can I actually see? Because obviously, I only have a comb, but I could assume I could look at through the window to see more. Uh, can you can you not see the cold light walker here? Yeah, I, I can see one. I presume I could see a bit more realistically. Uh, you you can probably make out like some hints of Volg. Let's say uh, uh, if, I, if I put my like token right in the middle, I feel that's exactly what I would be seeing. So I can see sort of Volg and three of them. Yeah, but regardless. Like it, so, it, like, what you can do is, um, if you click and drag your token while pressing Alt, you can have a, a non-grid movement, so you can, like, peek through. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's fine. Position in 5e is from any side or corner of your square, so if you position yourself, like, right on the line, that'll be an accurate representation of what you can see. Yeah, that's what I was doing anyway, but I will use uh, Hunter's Mark on the one that's actually been hit, because obviously we've seen that. Yeah, the the, the Ravison Walker has uh, received quite a lot of damage. Alright, then I'll take two... What am I see right now? I did... Uh, I'm sorry, well, let me just check what Volg's hits were. Oh, never mind. Uh, yeah, I'll just take two pot shots at it, basically, with the level along well. Alright. First one hits. Uh, the second one does not. <laughs> the, the the Colossus Slayer kicks in if it's been damaged, right? Yes. So the first one would be sixteen Six. damage. Yeah, that'll that'll be enough to kill it. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so uh, I guess do I just retake the other shot then, or I'll just say that one's a miss anyway? Uh, we can just say it was mi a miss. You could yeah, try to so. apply uh, Bardic Inspiration to it. You do have a D eight you can throw at it. True. Do I lose that if I use it? It's yes. one time thing, yeah. Uh, I presume I'll still keep it if I don't use it, so. Yeah. I'll probably just keep it for now. And pretty much that will be the end of my turn. Alright. Uh, letting loose the arrow, it sinks into the Raftsman Walker, who uh, cries out and then falls back into the snow, becoming nothing more than a lifeless corpse. May I interrupt for one moment? Yes. Congratulations, Yurik. You've made the hundredth kill of the campaign. Oh, I killed Stila. What do I win? What did I win? <laughs> Nothing. I don't know. I think he might deserve GM inspiration for that. <laughs> I'm surprised we have a hundred kills. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. I'll, I'll give inspiration for the hundredth kill. Hey! You get a free yeah. re-roll of pretty much any d20. Thanks, Mark. You, you really good. You helped me there. <laughs> <laughs> the, the real inspiration. I, I would have been fine with nothing, but you, you know, you pushed it. <laughs> you know, you don't get anything that you don't ask for. True. I guess what you're doing, Mike. I'm not, I'm not, gonna give out another one. I'm not giving out good. another one for that line of reasoning until you hit 200. <laughs> <laughs> We're just, we're just gonna go to slaughter, like uh, oh, there's, there's a small town of like innocent uh, lepers over there. You know, <laughs> we could increase our numbers that way. Yeah, and you guys can become the villains of the next campaign. <laughs> evil campaigns can be fun. Just saying. Well, e evil campaigns just become like anti-hero campaigns. Yeah, pretty much. Because <laughs> no. But uh. Uh, are you doing anything with uh, Danica? Well, yeah, I forgot. Hey, I was gonna I was gonna say she can only move there, I think. Well, she, she can she move dash. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just thinking. Can I see any? Oh, yeah. Uh, she's technically uh, holding. 
And I presume to Holden is like dealing with something, yeah, she, right? She would, she would be able to make out the outline of Holden through the uh, darkening sky and snow. Just reading her uh, actions. I, I like the lookout reaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was actually pretty good. Um, so I was looking at druid magic, and I was like, it says that I can empower any element spell to make it reroll, but is that a reaction, though? Because that would be like Zuna's casting and then me basically going, okay, that's it. it it's it's basically like, um, it, it's so much of a reaction, but it's like if she's using her standard action to do that, then, you know, any... Yeah, basically. I was going to say, can she reuse that every t turn? Yeah. Okay, um, I pres presumably would use that on Holden, because obviously we are dealing with Frost Druids here. Give him protection just because she can actually see him, or see already engaging with them. Okay. And I presume and that will be the end of my turn with her. All right, so what that means, Holden, is um, uh, you are able to uh, re-roll the damage of a spell or elemental effect and take the higher result. Once? Yes. Okay. As a result of Danik using her druid magic to assist you. All right, Zunas. All right. Um, what is this uh, mess I'm seeing to the side here? Is this like a big nasty cliff? Yes. A rise. That is, a, that is a cliff that drops 120 feet. Okay, so jumping off this ledge would not be advisable then. No, that would that would <laughs> I would say be an instant death. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just checking. Just checking. You gotta check these things. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, how much how much of a drop is it from from this ledge anyway? 20 feet. 20 feet? Ah, that's not bad. And you got, like, soft snow before. Or yeah. Below. So Zunus is gonna to run and jump off of that. Do you want to try acrobatics? I mean, he'll try it. I mean, there's no harm in, in a free attempt, but take the damage if not. Basically, just want to get myself uh, a little more visible over here. Yep. Uh, acrobatics... Okay. Hey. We'll just take... yeah, it's, it's, it's water, just frozen. Not quite like di diving in. Um, but what he will do is he will cast a now I'm it's called watery sphere, but I'd like to make the element uh air instead. It's not gonna do any damage changes. This is a CC ability, I just don't want water floating around these ice guys. Gotcha. All right, so this is going to appear. Get an effect going here. Let's see. Color-wise, we'll use sky blue. There's a swirling vortex of wind that appears in the back line here and is going to try to sweep up these two uh, ice druids here. Okay. They will need a DC 16 strength saving throw. So Iselm, the one on top, got a 9. And Nerith got a 7. Okay, so they are both caught up in it, I believe. Uh, failed save was restrained by the sphere and is engulfed. At the end of each end of each of their turns, they can make a new save. And I'm just double checking because Pathfinder version of this is a little different. I want to make sure I understand it correctly. Uh, yeah, so, you know, because why the fuck not? I'm going to have this move. No, I already used my move action, so I can't do it. Action to do that. So that's just going to stay there. And these two ice druids are just kind of flying around like a spin cycle in a dryer. <laughs> And that, uh, that is Zunus's action. <laughs> it's like, because light is like projecting from their faces. 
So you basically got like the sort of like laser show the disco, going on. The disco ball. Yeah. Um, are they are they're still able to make their actions though, right? They they are restrained. Okay. I, I might I might spin it so that like they're also if, if they don't make the save they can't make the action as well. Because because they're they're spinning around. There's like no way they're gonna like be able to right themselves and land an attack. <laughs> Yeah, basically, it's just imposing a, a, t a disadvantage to advantage to hit them and disadvantage for them to hit us. It is basically what it does. It's good. All right, Volk. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do Oya first because her thing basically boosts my attack. Uh, does she have any special move speed, or is it standard thirty? Uh, standard thirty. Okay, that should only. Really... Leap out the window, action move. Uh, so I guess the question is does she need to be next to me to use Rend? Um I think I, I think I specified it has to be adjacent. Uh, let's see. Party member succeeds on an attack roll. Oh, well. It doesn't specify. I but... yeah. I, I... You, you can sense. presume she'd have to be, like, next to someone. Okay. So all her stuff is uh, dashing over to get here. All right. And then I am having some swings at these guys. Uh, actually, second win first. Because, ouch. Right, uh, two swings at the middle, middle guy. Right. Uh, and I believe you have advantage, so... 20... and a crit. Alright, so that's 27. And then... Nine. Crit 30. giant strength for... 4. So, 34. I think I've crit every round. Oh, well, now you won't. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have said it. <laughs> Pointed it out. <laughs> I have confidence. <laughs> ah, that's me. All right. Uh, you get a few good slashes. At one point, like a frozen arm goes flying off. Uh, Oyo oh, yeah. was dashing over. Lawrence. All right, Lawrence is going to first and foremost uh, follow Zunus down. Actually, no, he's going to stay up on the, on the ledges here. He doesn't like to get into the face face of things. Uh, running. All right, that should be should be enough to see the, uh, Holden down there, right? Yep. All right, so Holden, you're getting Bardic Inspiration. you got a D8 to throw at your next attack roll. Or whatever attack roll you want to apply it to. And he is going to cast. He does not have a lot of combat spells. Um keep it simple. Guess we'll throw a firebolt at the one directly south of Volg. Actually, no, they'll throw it at the big moose. We'll do a concentrated attack here. Firebolt at the moose. Oh, wow. Oh, that works. I think you guys have at least crit once every round. <laughs> we'll see how it backfires uh, for us karm karmically later. But the, the moose is actually bloodied. And the uh, shield guardian will follow up with that. All right. Uh, first one will hit, second one will... Nothing giving it advantage, so that will miss on the second one. Oh, actually, no, he's invisible, so he has advantage oh, on yeah, every yeah. attack. Duh. So, uh, that's 26 then. There you go. There you go. Burton <laughs> Sweet. The moose has taken some invisible wallops. One of its horns starts breaking off and more bloody than usual. Oh, yeah, there's just visceral 
cracking and gore from this corpse. All that right. is Lawrence's done. Lawrence is done. Holden, you are face to face with the zombie corpse of Temerity. All right. to flurry of flows. Both of those will hit. Both of those will hit. That's 12, 12, 9, or 33, and then 40. Uh, the temerity walker is bloody as each fiery punch that you make causes more and more of the tiefling's body to crumble. All right, that's it for me. All right. Uh, it is the walker's turns. Uh, so the two in front of Volg are just sort of flailing around as they're trapped in that air sphere. End of um, their turn, they can make new saves. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just sort of ruling it, though, that they're like, because they're sort of flailing around and uncoordinated, that that sort of consumes their action. Cool. Um, so I'm just going to roll the saves. Uh, five and 14. So I think they're still stuck. Correct. Which leaves the... Um, Merity Walker next, as it just continues to mercilessly slam into Halden again. From the cold lips, it utters, You abandoned me. You abandoned the order. Yeah, well, Tamerity would never uh, say anything like that, so. <laughs> First attack, uh, 15. Second attack, 24. 24 does hit. Okay. Uh, it's going to be 11 bludgeoning. 16 cold. 16? 16 cold. Alright. Uh, and then, of course, the moose is going to attempt to strike back. Um, of course, we'll be at disadvantage. This one's a 19. AC 17, disadvantaged. Yeah, so only, only the first attack is going to hit the golem. Yep. That's going to take 11 bludgeoning and 12 cold. Checking for any DR. Look okay. like it. It does, it does regenerate 10 hit points at the start of its turn. Ah, that's the trick. Okay. So what were the numbers again? 11 and 12. So 23. Oh, cool. Yeah, that garden's actually really good. Um, but the, the moose is going to try and orient itself around here, which is going to activate Volg's Sentinel. Yay. I'm going to smack a moose. Uh, that hits. Yeah. Plus charge. Uh, that is actually enough. Moose goes down. It's awkward for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so with a, a good whack from your black sword, um, the moose's corpse just plummets into the snow, sending a, a small plume of flakes scattering around. Top of the round, Yurik. Hello. I can see we can see more. Um, <laughs> you see the uh, two walkers being swept up in icy winds. <laughs> have advantage uh, on those. Can, yeah, I can. I can for a bonus action. I can move my hunter's mark to this one. All right. And I will shoot my two bow, but I will use sharpshooter on both of them. Uh, 
Uh, first one hits. First one crits. And then the second one hits. Wait, do I get advantaged? Yeah, you, you already have. Oh, that's good then. <laughs> <laughs> so that's... So, uh, is it Shashu? Yeah, so I get... What's that? Uh, 15 plus 2. Plus six. Thank you. So that's uh, 41 total? Yep. All right. That is enough to end that walker. What <laughs> you think? Oh, you're <laughs> some assassin. <laughs> so so e even with the body flailing around, two articulated arrows fire out from the windowsill. And the corpse just stops moving as it's continuously thrown in the air. I forgot I even had the hunter's mark on that. <laughs> <Doesn't> <laughs> that. Yeah, it, it, that, that would have just sealed the deal, really. Um, stop, stop, he's already dead. Do you want to move uh, Danica? Oh, yeah. Uh, keep forgetting about that. You're probably gonna. Uh, how far is like that again, did you say? How far is what? The, 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 the drop. Oh, it's it's 20. Um, I mean, she, she could just drop down. Just yeah, so drop bit. down and, and do the same thing uh, Zunus did, basically, to try to get in view. Okay. She she will lose a hit point from that, but, like, um, in the same stat, she can, you know, manage to run up next to Zunus. Yeah, see, so something over there or something. Does she have attacks? Um, not particularly. She's more of a support character. Yeah, I figured that. Uh, I was gonna say, I don't even know if any of these have taken damage. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Folks, a little over half. Okay, so she can use Cure so on a Volk to Cure 9. HP. Just flat nine. Yep. Just flat nine. Mm. And now flat line? No, she, flat she nine. Can, she, she can use a reaction of look out. So you can add two bonus AC to one of you guys. Against the specific attack. Yes. That just says in response to an attack. Yeah. A attack. Anyway, it's all good. Uh, Zunus is going to maintain the concentration on the uh, whirlwindy thingy. Uh, he is going to... Running from cover to cover. Uh, just before he ducks behind the wall here, he will launch a firebolt at this poor soul. That's temerity. Uh, da -da 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 -da. uh that will hit okay that is it for him very simple mostly just concentrating on the uh the whirlwind uh dry cycle gotcha uh actually he's gonna take that remaining no never mind no need to complicate things. He's done. All right. Volg. Let's we'll switch it up a little bit and hit him with the sword. All right. Uh, 21. I'm going to use Oya's uh, ability. Oh, you're going to move her in? Yes. Put uh, over here. Sounds good. Uh, so we'll just run and do it. Adds 15 damage to that attack I just made. Yep, so that becomes 29. Uh, just a little plus 15 here. Uh, giant strength. And another attack. And more giant strength. Plus minus another. 
18. Was that more than your ex hit damage wise? I need to yes. know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a competition. <laughs> Freehand does the, the loser face back to you. <laughs> Uh, but that, that walker for Nerth is bloody. Oh, man, it's only bloodied. I mean, you didn't kill it like I did. I'm <laughs> weakening all of them for you. <laughs> uh, Lawrence. Sorry, my coach street's going up and yours isn't, so... Alright. Uh, Lawrence is just going to peek around the corner and throw a fireball. Keep it easy. Yep, yep. Okay. And duck right back around the corner. That Not need a, an ice ray to the face. Does it. Eight, eight. The Temerity Walker is still up, but the body is barely holding together. Okay. The Shield Guardian is going to try to finish the job. Shield Guardian does manage to finish the job. Ish, squish. So with an unfortunate crunch, Temerity's body is smashed into the snow before you hold him. And he'll move over to... It's a little off screen, but he'll be back in here to be there. Yep. Good. Holden! The uh, Temerity Walker is no... Yeah, I'll go fight the last one then. Alright. That hits. That hits. Uh, four. Hits. All those hit. Uh, it's dead. Nice. Yeah, so with a final fiery flurry. The last cold walker falls dead, unmoving. So all that remains around you is the cold, whipping winds. But uh, combat is now over. Is, is everyone okay? A few dents here and there. You're gonna just give a thumbs up out the window. Bill Guardian just fades into view. <laughs> with it his. Just pops out of nowhere. With like one of his gauntlets is just like dripping red, <laughs> staining the snow below him. He'll casually saunter off back to Lawrence's aid. Uh, with that plus 10 hit points every round, I'm assuming he just naturally heals the full? Yep. Can Danica heal outside of combat? Yeah. Can I have um, a Plus, I mean, like, if, if you guys, like... Yeah, if you guys basically take like, a short rest, you can heal all your wounds. True. Well, do we need to rest from it? Yeah, resting would be good. Or is, is this place safe? Yeah, it is now. It is now. <laughs> if we really need, I can always bubble us up. Yeah. Uh, I will go back to normal size and go inside. Go on in house. We should uh, gather ourselves and discuss uh, next options. What we are to do next. Um... I would say using the short rest, Dana could probably heal like 50 hit points worth of damage. 5-0? Yeah. Oh, hell. 
but that that's like split amongst you all. Oh. I had you can well, throw, you, you, you can throw an extra d6 on anyone who's taken a short rest from Lawrence's uh, song of rest. The free extra d6. Okay, so I'm basically at half HP. Got down to seven there. It was a bit dicey. Oof, I didn't realize I got hit that often. Your your token is like the one I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh Zunas, Lawrence, like everyone just kinda gathers. Whatever's the most uh accommodating looking room. Field Guardian just kind of sits there pouting outside as it can't join him. Just staring in the window. Wants to be a part of the fun, but can't fit the door. So, what's the next move? Where do we go from here? Well, back to what we were doing originally. Anakin nods like, yes, I believe we were headed to the Regged Glacier, were we not? Yeah, bit of trouble. Let's collect ourselves and get ready to set off then. There's no point wasting time. Seems they are already aware of us, so we should be in our jolly way. Oya, Oya agrees with that notion. Yes. Voral sending cold light walkers against us. Which at least knows moving against her. We need to act fast, otherwise more will be on their way. Uh, we'd best start walking then. Our usual sled and transports isn't going to accommodate this many of us. Um, to that well. end, and. You would have missed that, Zunas. Um, you have your own sleds, but um, uh, Danica and Oya have their own. Oya basically pulls Danica along. Oh, is that how it is? <laughs> Alright, um, I was thinking more of the Shield Guardian, actually. I mean, that could work too. What's that? I don't have any way to transport the Guardian. Uh, what's the Guardian's speed? 30 feet. Um, well, you can still take slides. We're just going to move slower. That's all. Yeah. I mean, it's a large creature. Probably like... I, I think the Werebear would probably be able to move Guardian and Danica. But yeah, it would be like a, a slightly reduced speed. Strap some skis to the chest of the Guardian, have him lay face first, and just ride him. <laughs> metal. Him He's metal, he can do it. <laughs> That's an idea. Well, in, in either case, uh, if everyone is rested after that, then we should get going. The more time that we spend out here, the more opportunity they have to, to lay in wait for us. Agreed. I think I'll go ahead and take us to the Twindale map. Safe to so say I... we're not on the sea of moving ice anymore. Nope. You guys are at the Black Cabin, which is, uh... Yeah, there you go. Oh, that Reged. wasn't even the glacier. Okay, cool. The uh, Regged Glacier is uh, 45 miles east of where you are. How is that in, like, days, hours? I'm, uh, I'm looking up the speed of the sleds. One of those things that I really should have written down somewhere. 
comes up all the time. <laughs> it, really, it, it really hasn't, it hasn't come, come, come up until this point. Um, 40 miles a day or something? No, that would be way too much. Well, you don't need to rest, which is the, the key thing. Um, with the normal sleds, you would have had like a team of dogs. Um, it states that traveling by dog sled is one mile an hour. By foot, it's double that. So, 44, 45 hours, so that's... If you went just straight, it would be, you know, about two days. But presuming you guys, like, take opportunities to rest, sparing the fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, say, like, 16 hours a day. So, one, two, probably get there at the end of three days. Sounds reasonable. Anyone else have any alternatives? Okay then. Yeah, doesn't sound like it. <laughs> hey, did I miss something? Any alternatives to just sledding over there in three days? I don't think uh, so. No, I guess just like trying your best to do it as fast as we can. Uh, right. On one of those days, Lawrence will uh, recharge the shield guardian with his greater invisibility. That worked out marvelously. Good. Um, does anyone know if there were any messages we needed to send around? Not as far as I'm aware. Yeah, not really. I think pretty pretty much all, yeah, all, all of your friend, most of your friends in Bryn Shander are aware that you're making this final trek. Yeah, they're, everybody's kind of aware that we're doing the final strike, basically the final move of the of the whole thing to try to stop this. <laughs> so it's a it's a long journey ahead of you as you um basically make your way eastward from the black cabin using your sleds um trail across cold icy wastes um you know it, it begins to dawn on you after about a few miles of traveling eastward that uh, none of you have been this far away from the Ten Towns. Like, at one point on all sides is just the, the cold, flat spread of icy hills, burrows, and not one sign of civilization on the horizon whatsoever. Just that, you know, silhouetted black and whatever you can see past the constantly falling snow. In some instances, the snow just feels fresh, like a, a land almost frozen in time. Um, occasionally you'll see like the, the, the top end of a tree, or maybe the um, occasionally exposed face of a sunken boulder pass you by. Uh, but there are just long stretches where you're just looking at the same scene. Um, but the first day passes without counters. Uh, you guys can spend a unit of rations. Oh yeah, and 
Oya and Danica have their own rations that they've received during preparations. Um, and, you know, much of... Much of the first night is spent, you know, in the dark. Nibbling on what provisions you have. Maybe setting up inside the uh, hut Zunus usually prepares. Oh yeah, he just pulls out like half a half a half eaten seal that he'd been saving. <laughs> it's gonna say obviously Yurik has meat to provide. Zunus will offer some of his uh, fish stock. Keeps it for food. It's hauling. I whip out some stroming. Yeah, <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh, it's just vile. I tried it once. I mean, you gotta eat it now. Pickle tearings. Pickle tearings come out. I will, uh, if Holden pops open the stinky fish, I will endeavor to try some. Since it's possibly our last battle. <laughs> it, uh... If it helps the inevitable con save, I will put pepper from it uh, on it from my pepper shaker. <laughs> <shake. laughs> pepper, 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 pepper. Add some mayo; it'll be fine. But uh, go go ahead and make the con save. See if you have the acquired taste for Sir Strong. That's pretty good. I would I would say that's probably like. If not just enough, the exact number you might have needed. Okay. Um, it... I mean, the, the, the texture is probably what gets you first. And that, like... The, the fish just melts. Like, there's, there's no... There's nothing to sink into. Um, but... You know, you know, of course, it has a, like a fishy flavor, but there's like also like a like a sharp tang of almost like blue cheese, and it, it's it's actually not as bad as it smells. <laughs> it's really just but the smell. You you would you would definitely need to, you know, probably have it a few more times before it became an acquired taste. Okay. Sort of raises it to Holden, like one for the road. You see, Holden just has it layered on hard tech, basically. O Oya also has like, <laughs> for, for the rest of folks, has like some, some salted and preserved fish that she can offer to a stew. You know, this might actually be one of our last peaceful nights. Or, well, what's coming? I do not think I've ever actually said to everyone, but I'm glad to have actually met you all. I've, most of my life has been sent, spent in coral reefs in the sea. Just studying and reading and not much else beyond that. This has been very much the adventure of the storybooks for me. I would thank you for that. Well, I concur. Meeting you has all been a pleasure. Uh... <laughs> and I suspect the pain as well many times. Yeah. We've had our back, though. Each other's backs. In battle. And outside of it. Well, I think if nothing, nothing else, uh, that's the last uh, melee showed us all, I think. 
the value in the teamwork, working together. We are all stronger for being together than we would ever be apart. And that will be enough. We'll win the day. I have no doubt. Just as the single dolphin, it's easy prey for the shark. The pod, the shark does not stand a chance. Oh yeah, Minotaur speaks up at one point. Yes, your courage in these times is something to marvel, truly. For the longest time, it's only been myself, occasionally others, who have attempted to guard the ten towns from the dangers of the Icewind Dale. It gives me great satisfaction being able to see you all develop, grow into strong warriors. And let us not forget uh, Speaker Lawrence here. Who would never thought that a simple bard telling stories would become the leader of a community? I see Ribble right now, anyway. Oh, it looks like he's already fallen asleep. Ah, we shouldn't <laughs> bother him. Well, it seems that he has the right idea. It is going to be a very long day. Best if we are rested, yeah? Indeed. Are we, um, are we using the... Uh, Zenith's magic tent? I presume so. Okay. Probably more detrimental to have watches in that case. Yeah, we also have the, uh, the shield guardian. Yeah. I was just going to say, the shield guardian's probably going to have to chill outside, but, uh, yeah, we certainly have the, uh, the bubble. Keep us warm and cozy. Well, the, more so, the shield guardian has blind sight and dark. Yeah, he's your perfect guardian. The Tunny Hut will be a little cozy. We've got a lot of people with us. So hopefully uh, our wear polar bear friend doesn't uh, snore. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll hear Oya breathing, but uh, it won't be like a loud snore. <laughs> if anything, like she'll just be like a big furry uh, shape just to give some warmth. Cuddle pile. <laughs> um, but fortunately, in this one instance, the night seems to proceed on without much interference. Um, the Guardian does not alert. You all wake up in probably the exact same lighting as when you slept. Um, you know, again, being... As overcast as it is with constant snows, it's hard to tell morning from night. Uh, but internally, you feel as though a new day has come. As, as you, you know, take a moment to gather yourselves and steal against the coming cold, you gather aboard your sleds and proceed eastwards towards the glacier. Um, so another 16 miles of travel um, again just more of the bleak winter wasteland passing you by um, 
never growing is the feeling that if you know if anything were to go wrong out here you are on your own but you have proven yourselves capable against the toughest challenges the Icewind Dale has yet to throw at you and that will keep you going um, eventually you make it far into the next day to such a point where the you can see the um, once distant outlines of the mountains preceding the glacier uh, slowly begin to grow, grow larger in view. Um, another night passes when upon the third day you arrive at the base of the glacier. Uh, at this point, you can sort of look ahead and see how, you know, the, the mountainous terrain rises up into this tall, ever-reaching, frosty... Um, it is here that the... Uh, the terrain of this land sort of shifts from these roving icy hills into just pure snow and ice. Is there any clear path or crevasse or anything that looks like there's been some kind of traffic? Some indication uh, of where, where in the glacier we need to go? It does not appear so. Um, what you know from Nass is that you need to recite the Rhyme of the Frost Maiden in order to use the book and basically carve a path in yourselves. Who has the book? Uh, I imagine it would either be Zunas or Lawrence. I just assume that's going to be a Lawrence thing. Sounds like a performant mm. performant task. Well, in that case, I will probably just read the rhyme. Lawrence is dead. I have it. I said Lawrence is dead. I'm like, who? Uh, here it is. Yeah. I've got it. Yep. Well, I also uh, stuck it in the journal. Oh. So, in, in Lawrence's slightly worn, scratchy voice, with the, the tiefling teeth get in the way a little bit. Strike suppose something dramatic. The rest of us are probably rolling our eyes a little. Let's see how the best to do this. Uh, da -dee -da -da. We bow to she who wears the crown. Let the world shiver with dread. Clad in winter's whitest gown, her snow enshrouds the dead. Her fury sheds but frozen tears as gray clouds issue forth. Her wind across the wasteland shears, bringing blizzards from the north. Ice-kissed flowers caught mid-bloom, beauty kept in all its grace. Summer's gone to its silent tome, stilling in her cold embrace. All the world in winter's white sheathed in sleet and ice, set upon never-ending night, she conjures paradise. Behold her everlasting rhyme, see how it covers all. Weep not for those she traps in time behind her glacial wall. Sovereign of summer's lost, general of winter's war, long live the queen of cold and frost, may she reign forevermore! Nice. Um, 
And so as as Lawrence finishes uh, <laughs> uttering this rhyme, um, a uh, a cold power sort of lights behind his eyes, um, kind of like flexes his fingers for a moment, kind of moves his hands in the air while holding the codicil as um, uh, each sort of movement causes the snows upon the glacier to sort of <laughs> shift and uh, <laughs> um, rustle around as if giant fingerprints were starting to sort of sway the snow. Um, and then with a big clap and then a dramatic tearing motion uh, a great chasm uh, manifests as walls of snow rend apart um, there's a loud booming crackle as snows from above the chasm sort of filter down and flood in um, but you can see it almost sort of like cracking a very thick egg there's sort of like a juncture point where um, enough pressure has been exerted that it sort of causes a gust of air to blow out, um, indicating some sort of uh, cavernous system underneath. Um, and then once finished, the light behind uh, Lawrence's eyes fades, and you have yourselves... Uh, the gaping maw of some cave. Signs of life for them? Uh, no signs of life. No, no responses or utterances in response. Just this... But you, you do detect that there is a, a slight draft coming from within. Just stop walking. This is it, boys. Let's go punch uh, the first man. All right. Uh, let us be to it. <laughs> you still got the filler on my Still got the filter. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it, it is here that we enter chapter six. Uh, you guys gain a level. Mm. Level up. Level up. For level nine? Yep. Ooh. Oh, that's very good. No. <laughs> and for those joining us on stream, Mr. Chief Gun, if you're still with us, thank you, as always, for sticking with us throughout this whole adventure. We'll hopefully see you for the epic semi-conclusion, because I'm sure it'll take more than one session. Rhyme of the Rumors. Well, this is oh, chapter probably six. There is a There is a chapter seven. Yeah. Okay. So, sure, ruin my whole outro, why don't you? <laughs> so on that note, thank you. Take care. Have a good night. See you next time. Bye. Bye.